Here we have a First Nations worksheet as part of our theme unit. And this one is on Aboriginal homes and the different types of homes that were built by our First Nations and Inuit people across Canada. Let's take a look at the first one. Our first picture we're going to draw is for a West Coast longhouse built by the Salish people, the Kwakutl people, the Haida people here in British Columbia. It was made of wood, sapling poles, bark, and grass matting. And if we look on our classroom website, we can get a good image of one here. Often they had a totem pole in the front and a big hole that was covered in the roof in the middle to let the smoke come out. There'd be a doorway entrance where the totem pole was in the front. So I just want to build what basically looks like a house. And these are really big buildings. They could sleep a large number of families in them. Everyone would sleep around the outer edge. The middle could be used for cooking and dancing. And these were permanent houses. They stayed up so the people didn't have to travel to hunt their food. There was plenty of food in the area. So there's our longhouse. Because it was made out of wood, I'll color it brown. There's my longhouse. The next home would be an igloo. That's made out of snow blocks. Here on our website we can see a good picture of an igloo. So it has this round dome shape to it, built in the snow. And it has a front doorway entrance. There's my igloo. The next one to draw is a teepee. I have a couple of different images on my website here of teepees. So teepees were made with long tree poles and then animal skin or animal hides. They were, they were cone shaped. They had this sort of triangle, but the bottom was round. And there'd be an opening here usually can be closed with an animal skin over top. There'd be a hole in the top area and out of the top would come the poles that were put in. These were easy to take up and put down so that they could be moved if you had to hunt after your food, like moving buffalo. Because they were made of animal skins and poles, you could probably color it mainly brown. Some of them were painted. There's our teepee. Let's go to our next page. Hey, for our next one it says a wigwam. Let's take a look on our website. Here we have a wigwam here. 
Wigwams are made of sapling poles and vine type rope. Bark or animal furs could use to, to cover it. And it was kind of dome shaped. So think of a, an igloo, but made out of wooden poles and covered in bark. So we're gonna give it that kind of roundish shape like this. On the ground. Again, it would have some kind of an opening for a door. It was made of poles. So we could use some brown to represent the wooden poles that were used. Then depending where you were in the country, the bark could be of different colors. Some of the bark that you peeled off the trees was almost an orangey, orangey yellow color. Other times it was quite brown. Other times, like in this picture, it was quite gray. Certainly as it got older, it could gray up. So it really sort of depended on what trees you took the bark off of, and that might depend on what part of the country you were in where you were making your wigwam. This would have been more in the Ontario, Quebec, even in the, the eastern provinces along the Atlantic coast, they may have made wigwams like this out of bark. Okay, our next one says an earth lodge. So an earth lodge was created by kind of making a big wigwam in a way, but then covering it with dirt. So really it looked like a home that was in a hill. They didn't take a hill and dig into it. They usually dug a pit or built a sort of a wigwam over top of a pit and then covered it all with soil. So really when it comes to drawing this one, we might just have a doorway here that could have some big strong posts. And then it's just kind of a, a hill that would be covered in dirt and mud, maybe even have grass growing on it. There's my sort of earth lodge. Again, you'd go through here and there might be a bit of a pit, a ladder that you climb down into, and like a wigwam over top of that pit, right? Dirt and everything would be thrown on top, sod, which is grass. And it was much cooler and more comfortable to live in. Okay, our last one is a bark longhouse. So these are similar to the longhouses we have on the west coast, but these are found on the eastern part of Canada. So they're kind of like a giant wigwam, but longer and much taller. Some of them could be as tall as what we would see as a two or three story building today. today. So we kind of have this long shape like this. doorway entrance over here and these are made with big poles and then covered in big pieces of bark they would be built with sturdy posts and logs but not as 
big and strong and permanent as the longhouses that are here on our area of Canada on the west coast of British Columbia. So they were longhouses but covered in bark, so bark longhouses. There's our bark longhouse. So we have six different types of houses that our First Nations people used across Canada.